We've talked about work. We've talked about kinetic energy. There's one more piece to this puzzle before we can do actual conservation of energy, which is the very powerful mechanism that I talked with you uh, about with you before. And it is potential energy. In this section, we'll derive, uh, talk about the uh, gravitational potential energy, but later on we'll talk about the potential energy due to springs and other uh, sources of energy. But today, potential energy due to gravity. Derive the work done by gravity and define the gravitational potential energy. All right, our first step is to define the work done, derive the work done by gravity. Well, the work done by gravity, work done by any force, by some particular force, is the magnitude of that force times the magnitude of the displacement, meaning the distance, times the cosine of the angle in between. Let's apply it to gravity. And let's do it in this particular case. I'm going to take a baseball and I'm going to displace it vertically. So this is the initial position. Um, and here's the final position. I'll take that uh, basketball and move it vertically upward according to this displacement S. Well, how much work does gravity do in that process? And first, just to get your uh, physical intuition moving, your ideas moving, here's the gravitational force. It acts down, mg. Here's the displacement. It's up. Do you expect the work done by this gravitational force during this displacement to be positive, zero, or negative? You say negative, and I say you are right. Why? The force is opposite to the displacement. You expect a negative amount of work. Well, let's see if that's true. We're going to plug in, instead of the force F, we're going to put in mg, because that's the force we're interested in. And then uh, for this magnitude of F, we're going to put in mg right here. S just comes along for the ride. Cosine of the angle in between the force and the displacement. Well, that's 180 degrees. There's where our negative sign is going to come from because the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. So this cosine gives me that negative sign. M and, and G come along for the ride. What's S? Well, S is the distance from the initial to the final position. Here's the initial height of the basketball. Here's the final height of the basketball. What is the distance between the initial position and the final position? And you say, well, isn't it just uh, the final height minus the initial height? And I say, sure enough, this, uh, this distance here is just the final height minus the initial height. And that's what we have here. So there's our S. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit to make it look uh, like the way I want it to look. MGHF, so I'm going to distribute the M and the G. I'm going to take them inside the parentheses. When I do that, because it's a difference, a, a sum, or HF minus H0, I have to multiply MG times HF minus MG times H0. This minus sign is still coming along for the ride. It, it's not cutting any ice right now. But I want to define, we've been asked to define the gravitational potential energy. I want to define the gravitational potential energy to be m times g times h, where h is the height of the object. If I define the potential energy in this way, this is the gravitational potential energy. If I define it in this way, 
then I can rewrite this equation in this way. How so? Well, mghf, that looks like the gravitational potential energy, but with the hf, the final potential energy, mgh final. This is the, gra the initial gravitational potential energy, mgh naught. So this will be the final gravitational potential energy, I know it's a mouthful, minus the initial gravitational potential energy, and what is that? That's just the change in the potential energy with this defining, mgh defining the gravitational potential energy. So that's a lot of mathematics, uh, but this guy you'll use over and over and over again this semester, the mgh. And this piece right here is the key for understanding the conservation of um, energy. But first, a statement down here. Increasing the height moving upward increases the potential energy. Well, this, in this particular example, my initial uh, position was lower than my final position. And what happened to the potential energy? It went, um, I'm sorry. As we go from here to here, we're increasing the height from H0, which is low, to HF, which is high. And so I'm increasing this height and increasing the gravitational potential energy. So increasing the height increases the gravitational potential energy. And likewise, if we're to take this as my initial and move it down, as I, as I lower an object, I'm going to decrease the potential energy. So the way to think about gravitational potential energy, and some of you might have seen this in other courses before, is that as you raise an object, you're actually giving it some potential for kinetic energy. Because the higher I raise this, that when I drop it, it's going to have a lot more kinetic energy. So that's one way of thinking about it. All right, the work done by gravity and the change in potential energy depend on only on the height difference between the initial and final positions and is independent of the path taken between these positions. We will see this phrase um, in a, just a few more minutes. The, um, the work done by gravity, uh, let's take the, the case where the initially I'm up high and finally I'm down low. We talked about that. We can drop the basketball straight down and, and use this equation to calculate the potential energy at any, different, at any given height of the basketball. But a displacement like this, where it goes uh, up, we throw the basketball up and it comes around and comes back down at an angle instead of just dropping straight down, these two will have the same change in gravitational potential energy. Why? The reason is what matters with gravitational potential energy is only the height. It doesn't matter where it is horizontally. So as long as the initial height and the final height above the ground are the same, then the change in the gravitational potential energy is still the same. Okay. In which of the following systems is there a decrease in gravitational potential energy? So first of all, another way of saying what we talked about in this slide is that at all of these points along this line, all these points are at the same height, at all of these points the gravitational potential energy is the same. Why? Because the height is the same. M and G haven't changed, still the same basketball, still the same gravity. So all these points share the same gravitational potential energy. If I move up, though, as we talked about before, the gravitational potential energy increases. As I move down, the gravitational potential energy decreases. All right, see so if we can answer this one. In which of the following systems is there a decrease in gravitational potential energy? Well, you already know the answer. 
you're going to have to go down. So let's see which one. Uh, a large boulder rests at the bottom of the hill, but it's not moving. It has to move for the gravitational potential energy to change. So this one doesn't work. Helicopter takes off from the roof of a hospital and flies horizontally due west. Well, how does the potential energy change if you're moving horizontally? It doesn't at all, because all those points are at the same height. A child accidentally releases a helium-filled balloon and it flies upward into the clouds. So that balloon is, is getting higher and higher, and the higher the height, the greater the potential energy. So we're not getting a decrease. We need a decrease, so this can't be right. A cat jumps down from a bed and lands on its feet. Cat starts here, jumps off the bed. It might not be going down vertically exactly. It might do a, a parabolic trajectory, lands on its feet. This is the one that we want. Why? Because the height is, is lowering. You're going down. And that will is signal a decrease in the gravitational potential energy. Okay, that's the one we want. A truck drives on, at an average velocity of 25 meters per second due north along a level country road. What about that one? Well, um, it's level. Height's not changing. Gravitational potential energy is not changing. So that's not the one we want either. <laughs>